So I get a lot of questions about this snap-on waveform generator that I use in some of the videos. So I'm gonna show you what it can do and give you some details on the part numbers so you know what to ask the snap-on man for when you wanna go and get yourself one. So the tool itself is for the snap-on dealers to have on the vans and they use it to demonstrate the uh, scopes that you get on the snap-on diagnostic tools. Now it's a, just a waveform simulation so it's not really designed to be used on the vehicles, it's just for learning purposes. So you can see here we've got like cam crank, we've got a wheel speed, an injector, there's a, a variable voltage there which I suppose it's just showing it as the pedal but it could be anything. And then we've got some signals here like a sine wave, frequency modulation and pulse width modulation and they can all be adjusted here. We've also got can high and can low and the ability to install some faults, okay? So there is an ignition pickup on there as well but to get that you need the snap-on connections, you know, with a, they're like um, capacitive pickups. Uh, and I suppose that's got the lead where you can plug it into there to check that. I don't have that lead, but the rest of it's pretty good. Runs off a nine volt battery, lasts quite a long time to be fair. The name of it then, it's the Scope Demo Board, okay? And the part number is EESX306SP. And you just switch it on by this button and we can see we've got like a little red LED that lights up next to it. It does switch off itself over a period of time. So let's connect it up and give it a go. What you're gonna be using on, on all of your measurements is this ground here. So there's a common ground connection that you can use to hook your scope up to. Okay, so I connect that up to the crankshaft sensor there. In fact, we can do the camshaft sensor at the same time. And let's just turn on channel B on Pico scope here. So we'll just go for the same kind of range there and separate them apart. And now you can see that you've got a, a nice kind of camshaft crankshaft waveform on there to kind of practice your correlation, okay? So you, you can have a mess around with that, you know, working out the uh, timing of the engine. Uh, we've also got an injector there. So for the injector, you might need an attenuator on there. It goes up to about 30 volts so with this picoscope automotive scope this is the the older version um, it's only got a maximum of a, a hundred volts input i say only it's more than more than most um, so you might need to put an attenuator on there as well however if we just reduce that time down look and add a trigger onto channel b we can see that injector waveform there and you know, it's, it's probably not exactly what you would expect from a real injector, but it gives you a good idea. Uh, we've also got then the uh, wheel speed signal. Okay, so you can see there, that's, uh, that's a pretty good example of a wheel speed signal. Remember a lot of these wheel speed sensors now, they don't go from um, kind of five to zero or, or you know, 12 to zero. They're a kind of small signal that just sits on a voltage so this one here if we just reduce that voltage down a bit we can see is going between one and a half volts and half a volt so we've got like a one volt drop on that um, wheel speed signal there we've got the uh, the varying voltage so you can just turn that up and down what you might want to do is put it onto a a longer time scale so you can see the time like that and that's good for like practicing single triggers as well so you can put a single trigger on there and let me just show you that so we've gone to triggers single trigger for channel a and if we bring that back here look that's not going to go anywhere now until that single trigger is met and that waveform will just go all the way along there until it reaches the end and stops the scope. We've also got can high and can low. So let me just start the scope now. Of course, we're gonna to have to reduce the time right down. And what we'll also do is make sure the voltage scales are, are about the same. So just bring them both down to about 10 volts. And 
We also want to align the zero on both sides. So let's put that to about there. Let's reduce that down a bit more. Ah, still got single trigger on. Let's turn that off, put it onto auto and reduce that down. You can see that you've got a little can image there. Now it does just put out the same kind of message consistently. So it's just a, to give you an idea. In fact, this isn't the kind of best way for me for it's generally you'd kind of expect something that's much squarer. Okay, so with, with higher sample rate. So it's, it's not outputting like a, an exact square canvas image. Um, the other ones we've got then, so I'll do these on, on two channels here at the same time. We've got frequency modulation and a pulse width modulation. So on the blue there, we've got the frequency modulation. We can see that we can increase and decrease the frequency of that there. And then on the red one, we've got the pulse width modulation. So we can see the red now is pulse width is changing. So that'll give you an opportunity to practice things like measurements, math channels, things like that. In fact, if you really want to get kind of into uh, the oscilloscope usage and that, make sure you go and check out the oscilloscope masters program that we've got. And um, that's a full uh, oscilloscope course that's lifetime access. And um, we've also got some oscilloscope training included in the diagnostic coach program as well. Um, and that is currently available for $10 a month. So go and have a look at that. Um, the other one that we've got on there then is the, uh, the sine wave. So what we can do there is change the frequency of that sine wave. And actually it's kind of similar to what you'd expect on a wheel speed sensor or a crankshaft sensor because the, the amplitude changes with the frequency as well. So that's, that's pretty cool. So that's the snap-on waveform simulator. Um, really good little tool. Uh, it's a little bit expensive, but you know, I, I use it quite a lot for training. And it, you know, if you really wanna sit down and practice your skills without worrying about getting on a vehicle um, and all that, then you can get one of these.